the immediate catalyst was actually walking into an art class one day. I was um, studying nuclear science back then, focusing mostly on that area. And I walked into an art class um, sort of by chance, really. And I felt like a fish in water, and I just knew this was it. But really, there is some background to it, too. I come from a family of artists. My, my dad was an artist. My uncle was an artist. My grandfather was an artist. My brother is a filmmaker. So it's kind of the family business. And um, I had a problem because I was interested in science and I was interested in art. And both of them were really had to do with, uh, with, I guess my interest was because I wanted to see what things were really, really about. And both of those tackled it from the same, you know, from different ways. But um, I had to make a choice in university and I, I broke for science. But the last year of my science, I walked back into an art class and suddenly I broke the other way. And, um, you know, the die was cast after that and I actually, I had, I, I began to do a little bit of work in the science area and then I stopped and I went to art school and the rest is what happened. <laughs> so I work in series and usually there's something that is possessing me and then I work it through in art until I've worked my way through to some kind of conclusion. Uh, and the inspiration usually starts with something personal that's in my life. Either I'm involved in it or something has happened to me or something that has moved me in a very personal way. Um, I then start to look at other artists who might have been dealing with something similar. And so I start to expand out into art historical you know, references. And um, then I, it usually leads me to ask larger questions like if I'm going through this, other people must be going through this. And that leads me to more societal questions. And eventually it may expand all the way out into into science and ultimately, you know, I guess touch on the different ways that I look at things. So those inspirations really come from all over. In the case of this particular show, uh, this show started exactly that way. The personal side of it was it kind of began with a, uh, it's sort of like a year of Job, if you know the book of Job. Um, I, it, it began with things that you know, calamities happening around me. My father passed away uh, during this year. Uh, other members of my family, my mom got very, very sick. But uh, these things sort of got closer and closer. I had a very bad bike accident, um, uh, health issues. I began to touch on really the big questions about life and death for me. And um, so that kind of led me to start, I thought, well, it's really horrible, but I'm also, it's a point to ask about existential questions. And so that led me to, you know, the bigger questions of life and death. And I started to look at who else has been dealing with these questions. And uh, it took me to literature, to Dante's Divine Comedy, and his walk, sort of a metaphorical walk through hell and purgatory and into heaven. Um, it took me to, to another author called uh, Bulgakov, who wrote a book called The Master and Margarita about the devil coming into Moscow. And that sort of took it into a more political terrain. Um, and um, it took me into science, which was uh, primarily would be Stephen Hawking and his book, um, A Brief History of Time, which I used for the title as well. Um, but what really, really sparked this particular show and why I did it at that time, um, the immediate inspiration for me was, was I'd, I'd been wanting to do a big show like this or a big body of work like this for a long time, but um, the personal thing for me was what got me started. And at the same time, as I was beginning to work it through, the world was starting to undergo a kind of a revolution or just enter into chaos. And we weren't where we are today, but it was the beginning of the first waves of, of refugees. And um, I was very familiar with those kind of pictures because um, I know them from art history through Goya, but I know them even closer through my own father who actually made paintings like the scenes that I was seeing on the news uh, right after the Second World War. And we had those hanging on the wall. So the moment I saw those, I felt well, here we are again, back into a, a place that I've heard a lot about. Um, and that sparked, that sparked the need to, to do these paintings. Uh, in terms of materials, it's really simple. I use oil paint and I use, you know, um, uh, turpentine or a safer version of it. Um, and linseed oil, these are the classical instruments that people have been using to paint you know, for a very, very long time. Uh, I like it because the, there's almost no process involved. It's an immediate medium, so I can immediately just get to work. There's very simple elements that can, can be combined in endless, endless ways, and you'll never exhaust the possibilities, and I won't in my lifetime, and in centuries of oil painting, we have not exhausted it. 
so I love it for that. Uh, so it's been my medium of choice and I can work very quickly with them and I can work on very long pieces that take me a year and the medium expands to all of that. And I can work very small, I can do really huge pieces in it. So I don't find any reason to change. I was very much the same in science. I didn't like chemistry because there was a lot of process involved and a lot of basic facts you had to know. Whereas physics was sort of like painting. There were paintings, I need three primary colors, white and black, and I can create anything with that. And with physics, there are very few axioms that you begin with and everything else comes out of first principles and there's something really beautiful about that to me. So that's my medium. And in terms of size, I go all sizes, but it is common for me to work through ideas in smaller sizes and finally do one big blowout <laughs> where I've sort of summarized everything that I've been building up over time into one huge piece. And in this case of this show, it was actually two huge pieces instead of just one. When big bad things happen to you, aside from the negative, there's also an opportunity to view things. You feel like the, I felt that it gave me an opportunity to have the curtain of things pulled back and the big existential questions of life were suddenly there for me and I couldn't ignore them anymore. I had to actually look at them. And I, I don't want people to be walking around thinking about these big questions all the time, but if people do go through the show and it does pull back that curtain a little bit and just make them ask that once in a while and, and pose some questions that maybe they haven't been wanting to think about, then I think the show has done its job. I felt a very strong need to do it in 2013 when I began it um, because as I was talking about the personal things and what was going on around me. And as we got, we had originally planned the show to, at the Koffler to be a year later than it was. And as we got close to it, I had a very, very strong feeling that we had to show this right now. <laughs> and I actually called up the curator and asked her if we could pull it up a year. And at first she said, there's no way, but it turned out by some fluke that there was another mistake with another show and the slot became open and we switched places and I could do it then. And I had the sense that the, that the world was moving into chaos and that the things that my father, who was a Holocaust survivor and had lived through it the first time around this happened, or you know, recently, um, I felt that the things that he was describing to me were happening right now, that the chaos was happening. He'd always warned me that when economic times are bad and, peop and people you know, aren't doing well, that um, it can be a time of great anger and that anger is going to look for something to hate. And it's a very dangerous time for civilization because a demagogue can come and give them a place to place all that hate. And I, did, I learned from my dad too that humanity actually hasn't changed since the days of the Holocaust and the World War is that we're still the same human beings. There's a flaw in the human character that allows these things to happen under certain circumstances. And feeling this coming, I just felt like I couldn't scream it loud enough. And the show was kind of, was kind of that. I feel interestingly enough, timing-wise, that the show, which is very much about the beginning of ending of our own time, the beginning of ending of civilizational time, and the beginning of ending of time in general in the universe, uh, which is the cosmological side of it, I think it's this also, the show, to me, there's a nice, I'm hoping, hopeful thing about this, is that this show was actually shown just before the huge cataclysm that happened down in the United States, down below us, and uh, a great dictator, or would-be dictator, has taken over. And um, I feel this right now we're at the beginning of the end of that, after this last election that happened. And I'm hoping that maybe these beginning and endings that this show was about is also the beginning and ending of a very dark period that we've been going through. <laughs>